Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This video has been sitting in my drafts for so long, it's been about a year, it's just been sitting in its raw form. So I thought I may as well just get off my ass and actually make the damn video. So today we're going to be having a look at how I made my Destiny 2 Hunter cape. So let's get started. This is a really simple design and if you're looking at starting to get into sewing for cosplay, this is a really good place to start. Just a really basic cape design. For this particular build, I went all out with the fabric. The fabric you can see me spreading out here is a type of pleather and it had this beautiful snakeskin design on it. What I was mainly looking for in the fabric I was using is something nice and thick. I wanted a thick fabric that was actually going to sit really nicely when it was on my shoulders. I didn't want it to be very flimsy, uh, something that could blow in the wind too easily. I wanted it to look like how the capes look in game. Now, as you can see, I'm not using a pattern for this. In fact, you saw in the earlier scene that I was laying down to work out how long I wanted this cape to be. Right here, we're just trying to cut out a rectangular shape, which will be the main section of the cape. So what I'm doing here is folding it in half so I can get the pattern lined up how I want it, pinning it together, and I'm just going to cut down that length in just a second. Once you have this sort of basic rectangular shape out, you can actually change it up a little bit. You can cut some more excess off the end or the top to get the shape that you want. But this is a really good place to start if you're not using a pattern. Now, once the rectangular shape was cut out, I'm going to keep it folded in half because now we're going to cut a small hole for the neck. Again, no patterns here. We're kind of winging it a little bit. I put it up to my shoulders before this just to check sort of how wide it needed to be. But from there, we're just going to cut off a little bit at the time until we get the right shape. So here you can see I'm testing the fit of that neck hole. I wanted it to be deep enough that the actual cape comes over my shoulders a little bit, but not too deep as well. I highly recommend doing constant test fits when you are making something like this, even if you do have a pattern. But now we're going to move on to the next piece of material. This material is a lot thinner, it's again another sort of pleather, and we're going to use it to add a bit of details over the top of the main cape. We don't need this material to be as thick as the original because the original is going to hold the shape well enough on its own. So now I'm using the actual shape of the original material as a template so that I can be sure that this detailed material is going to sit really nicely on top of the original. And we're going to pin that in place with just some pins. I also have a tape measure there so I can work out where I want the apex of this design to be. And don't be afraid to take the pins out and rearrange this, change it up if it's not quite right. At the very least, you want to make sure that you have an excess of material in case you do need to go in and cut some more off and change the shape up a little bit. So now we're just going to take some scissors and cut this out. And you can see that I am leaving about an inch around the side. You want to leave about an inch or whatever you feel comfortable with because we're going to fold that edge over to give it a nice finished edge. And we're now going to flip it over and cut out this triangle bit as well. Once you've cut it out, it looks something like this. So remember that excess edge I just spoke about? We're now going to go around and tuck it under and pin it into place. This is going to make the edge look a lot more finished. Now, although straight edges are really easy to fold over, curved edges are not. You're going to want to put a couple of slits in there just so it folds over nicely. There will be a little bit of overlap on the other side, but that's okay because we're not going to see it. And I also highly recommend that you do pin this down. I know it can be easy to just, oh, you know, it's too hard to put all these pins in. Let's just go ahead and sew it together. But the pins do make a difference and you'll make sure that everything is in the right spot if you do use them. Now, even though around this triangle section, we can't actually fold the black edge over the green fabric, we're still gonna fold it over itself so that we get a nice finished edge. Now, 
Now here I wasn't quite happy with how the shape was working out, it seemed a little bit too long, so I decided to go in and pin it over in a different direction. I made the apex a little bit sharper and a bit shorter as well. Now is a good time to play around with the design a little bit if you're not 100% happy, because once you sew it in place, it's going to be really hard to unsew it. And so it looks something like this when it's all pinned into place. And now we're up to my favourite part, which is sewing. Because we are using Plever, you want to make sure you've got the right sort of needle for this and the right sewing machine as well. Your local craft store should know what needle to use. And if not, it usually says on the packaging or you can find online. As I did film this video over a year ago, I'm not 100% sure what this needle was, but it was a rather thick and strong needle. If you use anything that's not made for Plever, the needle's either going to break or you're not going to get a nice stitch. And if you don't have any experience sewing with a sewing machine, there are plenty of amazing tutorials out there, especially on YouTube. And if you really want to, you can always hand sew as well. So this is what it looks like. And that's the really nice finished edge I was talking about. See how nice it looks? So this is the finished result. I was really happy with how it turned out. I think in future I might add some sort of insignia onto the black fabric. I was thinking maybe the Hunter's insignia like what's on the Fromulus cloak. But at this stage, I kind of like how it looks, how it's nice and plain. It's not too busy because that green plever is absolutely incredible. And I love how it looks. And so this is also how the cloak goes on. There's a little bit of a twisty thing I've done with the elastic. I sadly didn't film how I attached the elastic, but I really just took a big elastic band, sewed it in place on one side, wrapped it around the, my body to find the length, and then sewed it in on the other side. You don't have to wrap it around like this, but this is just what worked for me. So thank you so much for watching guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.